Cyberpunk 2077's ray tracing overdrive mode running at 100 FPS and more on an RTX 3080, yeah, your eyes are not fooling you there. Thanks to a recent mod by online persona Nukem, nearly any and every game which supports DLSS 3 frame generation now supports AMD's FSR 3 frame generation in its stead. So that means you can enjoy the benefits of AMD's frame generation in ultra demanding titles like Alan Wake 2 with its path tracing enabled, even though titles like this one and Cyberpunk currently do not natively support FSR 3 frame generation technology. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how you can upgrade a game's fluidity with this FSR 3 mod, and I will answer the question of how it performs and looks, and I will compare it briefly to DLSS 3 frame generation. But before I get into the nitty gritty, let me briefly state one little caveat about this awesome FSR 3 mod here, and that is, unfortunately, it is currently limited to RTX GPUs. So even though Team Red came up with FSR 3 technology, this mod at the moment that I'm using to showcase in this video does not support AMD GPUs or older pre-RTX GPUs. It says so in the mod description, and that also pans out in practice. I tried loading up the mod on a Radeon 7900 XTX to no avail. I think the reason is because the way the mod is set up, and as a result, it requires an RTX GPU. It's a shame, but in the bright news in the future, there are other mods that are going to be coming out that will make universal FSR 3 tools to inject into many titles. Remember Luke FZ's mods for Starfield? Well, they're working on something similar for FSR 3 frame gen, and we're gonna see it in many more titles in the near future. But in the meantime, thanks to Nukem, at least we have FSR 3 running on RTX 2000 and RTX 3000 series GPUs, whose owners may have been getting a little bit envious about all that fame generation stuff on RTX 4000 GPUs. And this mod here can help fulfill a very similar role for aging GPUs and help unlock some extra lifespan out of them, really. So how does it work? I think it's really simple. As per the instructions on the mod page, you download the file and drag and drop the two DLLs from the extracted folder into the directory that contains the game's executable file. For example, in a Plague Tale here, just the main folder where you can see the game's exe there. Then double click the registry change enabling file to make the game and Windows think your GPU supports DLSS3 frame gen and voila, when you go in game, you can see the ability to enable DLSS3 frame gen even though this older RTX GPU definitely does not support it, like the RTX 3080 here that I'm demoing. When you enable frame generation in the game menu, instead of enabling DLSS 3 frame gen, you are in fact enabling an injected version of FSR 3 frame generation. And as far as I can tell in my testing, this FSR 3 frame generation is also special in that it allows for different image quality treatment. For example, here in Miles Morales, I've enabled frame generation on the RTX 3080 and have four different image reconstruction techniques working with it. IGTI, DLSS, XCSS, and of course FSR 2. So unlike the official FSR 3 titles released so far, such as Avatar, Frontiers of Pandora, you're not just locked into FSR image reconstruction to use FSR 3 frame gen. This is nice and very appropriate for older RTX GPUs where I would definitely recommend DLSS over FSR 2 for example. So how does the frame generation fare? The immediate impression is really well. Like with DLSS 3 frame generation, I think most people will be astonished at the immediate increase in output frame rate when turning on this injected version of FSR 3, and as long as the frame rate is high enough, I think any increases to input latency will be seen as negligible as a price to pay for the added fluidity just as Rich discussed in his FSR 3 review a number of months back. Beyond the installation from a user perspective, I would say it is about 90% the way there to a native FSR 3 fame generation implementation. You click on it and you're good to go in game. The reason why I say it's 90% of the way there to a native frame generation implementation is because there are idiosyncrasies of FSR 3 native implementations that cannot realistically be accounted for here in the mod. Native FSR 3 frame generation implementations have multiple ways how to handle the UI in a game, for example. And usually, developers elect to keep the UI from being interpolated. So in a game that's 120 FPS with FSR 3, usually the UI is still at 60. This is different than DLSS 3. 
As a result of being added on top of what DLSS 3 was doing, you see issues with UI in games with this mod, like here as we can see in A Plague Tale. And although I think the UI is the biggest issue here, we still have to give FSR 3 the benefit of the doubt here in terms of quality, as we are looking at a mod here and perhaps even the frame generation quality itself could be better in a native implementation than what we're seeing with the mod. Still, I would say you're getting close to FSR 3 native quality here for most users' perception, and it even goes beyond native implementations by allowing you to use DLSS, TAA, or any other image quality treatment while FSR 3 frame gen is active. Interestingly, because we are using a modded version of FSR 3 here that hijacks DLSS and only works with RTX cards, we get another secret advantage with this mod, and that is that an NVIDIA Reflex applies to FSR 3, as we can see here in Spider-Man Miles Morales running with G-Sync on a 120Hz screen that I recorded off screen here. As you can see, Reflex is actually artificially limiting the frame rate here below 120 FPS to prevent frame queuing from V-Sync occurring at the monitor's refresh rate. And as you can see on the bottom there, with the display from the monitor, the monitor's refresh rate is adjusting in kind with that Reflex frame cap. So you will actually get the benefits of reflex latency mitigation with this FSR 3 mod, something you wouldn't necessarily get in a standard FSR 3 native implementation. Okay, so what is the frame rate uplift like? Let's start with the classic in-game benchmark in Cyberpunk 2077. Here I'm running it with RT Overdrive, Max Settings, RTX 3080, 1440p, DLSS, Performance Mode, Ray Reconstruction. FSR 3 frame gen is on here on the right, and we're really seeing fantastic uplifts here in the overall frame rate and the general apparent motion fluidity of the camera movements on screen on the right hand side of that screen here. Here in the benchmark we're seeing around a 67% uplift in overall average frame rate on the RTX 3080, bringing the game from the upper 50s and low 60s to around 100 FPS usually, and a bit more. That's taking a rather standard experience and propelling it into HFR territory, all while RT overdrive or path tracing is enabled. This is an excellent upgrade for the RTX 3080. A very similar upgrade can be seen when using our open world car traversal benchmark that Rich and Will tend to use in their GPU reviews. Here we're seeing a similar 65% average uplift in frame rate. With FSR 3 frame gen enabled, you can definitely see a palpable increase in the fluidity of camera movement. Here I'm showing the game with a high level of DLSS scaling in performance mode, but you will see similar or even better scaling with FSR 3 on when you go up to something like quality mode, as we're seeing here, where I can see FSR 3 increasing average frame rates by around 73% on that RTX 3080. The issue here with using higher DLSS modes on a GPU you like this is that you have a lower input frame rate. Thus you're decreasing FSR 3's fluidity and you're rapidly increasing the visibility of present artifacts, which I'll talk a bit about later. As per AMD's suggestion, I also recommend applying FSR 3 frame gen to games and settings which are already at around 50 to 60 FPS at a minimum. With 50 or 60 FPS input frame rates, you'll get a minimum viable experience with the technology where the output frame rates tend to be in excess of 100 or so. This is important so as to make artifacting less visible, but it's also important if you're on a mouse and keyboard setup where input latency is much more easily felt than on a controller. Okay, some good results in Cyberpunk here, but do we see similar uplifts in non-path trace titles? I would say based on the experience that I measured in Spider-Man Miles Morales, the answer is yes. Here we're running the game with DLAA at 1440p with ray tracing settings maxed out. We can see that FSR 3 frame generation when enabled on the right here is increasing the average frame rate by about 65%. So very similar numbers to what we saw in Overdrive Cyberpunk. In GPU limited scenarios like the ones I'm showing here, this is where you'll tend to see around a 60 to 75 percent average increase in frame rates on your GPU. It's only in CPU limited scenarios that one starts to see near 100 percent increases in frame rate and that's something Rich talked about in his original FSR 3 review. So the increase in frame rate is readily apparent and so is the increase in camera motion fluidity. But how fluid is FSR 3 in these games. Now what I'm going to talk about here is actually very subjective for most people, but I think there is some objective data to talk about here. 
If you can recall, back when I covered Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, I had a mini section of that long review talking about how FSR 3 was in that game and how it could sometimes have issues presenting smooth frame times with VRR enabled. Basically, you could start traversing the world in its more denser areas or engage in combat, and the frame times started to get more erratic. So even though FSR 3 was supporting variable refresh rate monitors correctly, it still did not always look super smooth in such moments due to the variability of the frame times. That is a completely subjective appraisal of course, and in the aftermath of the video I saw a lot of comments under the video or elsewhere on the web that presented different subjective or objective measurements. Here it is important to note a couple of things. One is that not everyone can always perceive frame time discrepancies in games, and that's completely valid. Another thing to note is that not every PC or test sequence will show the issue that I highlighted. Even in that video review I talked about how the issue was sometimes happening, but not always. So I really did actually want to try and get at the bottom of the issue here for this mod video, but unfortunately I have come out only more confused after my testing as I cannot get consistent behavior. One of the theories in the wake of the last video was that the injected overlays like FCAT that we at Digital Foundry use for PC, well that they could be triggering the issue. So in the wake of that, I tested the game with and without an overlay. And as we can see here, here's the game running with an overlay being used and frame time analysis is being done by FCAT. We can see the frame time issue occurring in the bottom right of the frame time graph here. Basically, larger frame time discrepancies between frames can occur that present similar to VSync Judder on a VRR panel. Now here's a similar scene again without the overlay being injected at all, but instead I'm measuring the game's frame times using our console measuring tools, which just analyzes video feeds. And guess what? The same issue can occur on the bottom right there when you see spurts of sawtooth frame times. So in the testing, the overlay did not seem to change the ability for the issue to pop up. Another question was whether the sawtooth frame time issue could happen on AMD. So I dropped in an RX 7900 XTX and tested the game out there and I was also reproducing the sawtooth frame time issue just like I was on an RTX 4090. So I don't think, at least in the testing I did there, that the issue was occurring whether or not an overlay was on or whether or not the GPU was AMD or Nvidia. It was just happening. So I enlisted the help of Richard Ledbetter here to test on a different setup entirely with a Core i9-13900K with the 7900XTX there to see if he could replicate the issue. When he tested, no sawtooth frame times were occurring in that same problematic area where I measured the issue occurring on different GPU hardware, with or without an overlay. I go back to test the area again after that because I'm so confused and guess what? I load up the area again and suddenly I'm not seeing the issue at all just like Rich is not seeing it. The game hasn't been updated. My PC has not changed at all and really nothing is different. So whatever is causing frame time sawtoothing and unsmooth VRR behavior, well that's currently a mystery to me. The final answer is that I really need more time and research to figure out what can cause the issue that I've measured. In my play when trying out the FSR3 mod on the RTX 3080, I found that the frame time issue was not showing up consistently there either on that RTX 3080. It was under control at times in many of the times titles I tested with little to no issue when you just be cruising along, but then sometimes it would flare up all of a sudden and impact the consistency of the frame generation experience, making it less smooth. Rich did his own testing of Cyberpunk on the 3080 using the mod, and his testing did not show the issue being present to the same degree. Other than our CPUs being different, but both being ridiculously high end, I don't think there's any defining factor as to when and how frame time issues might occur when using FSR 3 if they're going to happen at all. Reading up on user reports, I have seen that some people say that they have impacted smoothness when using FSR 3, while others don't see any issue at all. In light of that, and my inability to consistently reproduce the issue based on some factor, my general tip is to just give the game a restart if you start seeing issues, as my avatar experience shows. With that in mind, I would say FSR 3 can be very smooth with VRR, and the reasons why it cannot, well, they're currently unknown and they require quite a bit more research.
Getting over to the comparison to DLSS 3 and general quality, I would say the quality is good enough for most normal camera movement, but there are definitely some obvious problem areas in the modded frame generation here. One particular problem is shadows. Check out this footage of me moving side by side in a Plague Tale Requiem. Notice how you see a kind of flashing double image of the shadow that looks like it is stuttering as I move from side to side. This is due to shadows in FSR 3 not being properly reprojected. This does not happen with native DLSS 3 in the games you can inject to like we see here, but it does happen with FSR 3 in all of the games I tested, like we can see for example here in Cyberpunk when focusing on the car's shadow at the bottom of the screen. This tends to be one of the more obvious artifacts when using this mod. Another issue is silhouette and hair artifacting like we see here in Alan Wake 2. When I move the camera from left to right, you should be able to see what I mean on the character silhouette of their hair, a kind of fizzling and haloing around the head that occurs. And this is an issue that you'll see in other third person games with this FSR 3 mod that just doesn't really happen with the LSS 3. The last larger issue you may notice is a kind of stippled noise look showing up at some times in areas of greater contrast moving quickly. The reason for this is due to FSR 3 Resolve, which seems dithered. So sometimes things look a bit noisier depending upon how much full screen change is occurring rapidly. Now there are technically more quality differences with DLSS 3, but this is just a mod and completely unofficial. So focusing on the quality I think is missing the point as it's not really representative of an official FSR 3 frame gen implementation. The bigger point is the one I talked about earlier. Camera motion and translation generally looks better and the game is going to be increasing frame rates in a way that will definitely extend a GPU's utility over time than it would not have had before. And that is really all I have to say about this mod. I think it's pretty cool. If you did find this video cool, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. Support DF on Patreon to get years of our work in high quality for download. Follow on Twitter, comment below, and as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell, and auf Wiedersehen.